Holiness is wonderful. Heaven is full of holiness. And in heaven, there is no pain, no suffering, no mourning, no crying, no sadness, no depression, no fighting. It is enjoyable there. Without sin, it's enjoyable. Holiness is enjoyable. And God is holy, and God is an enjoyable God. He's someone we can enjoy. Heaven is enjoyable. So that's His nature. That is how God is. He is holy and He is beautiful and He hates sin. And wherever God is, is beautiful because He's holy. If God has sinned, then He's not beautiful anymore. But God doesn't have any sin. And God's grace, God's grace is what He does for us. Okay, so you can see the word us. Us. So you can see the word us when we talk about grace. Grace is what He does for us, okay? So He sent Jesus to die for us so that we can have forgiveness of sin. He gave us strength to overcome sin. So this is very important. We don't just get forgiveness. We have strength to overcome sins. Now this is one area we can talk about in different uh, messages. In different messages, we can talk about God give us strength and God helps us and God reward us and God give us wisdom and help us to grow. So all these are applicable to other uh, messages also. So God give us strength, God help us, God guide us. And the Holy Spirit reminds us not to sin, reminds us to obey Him and live in holiness. And God give us joy and reward when we overcome our sin. So these are some God's, of God's grace that He motivates us to obey Him and not to sin. So here the nature and grace of God is related to the theme, not to sin, okay? So it's very important that every point is related to the theme. Don't stray away. Don't talk about something else. And some people in a message is always general. It's always general. They they just say, okay, God forgive us, and then we obey, and then we preach the gospel. It's all general. It's, it's like everything is put into the message, but then it's no one specific point. So this one specific point in this message is don't sin and live in holiness. And why many Christians continue to sin? Because they don't have a close relationship with God, then they don't have strength to overcome their sins. And they don't realize that sins are destructive, even when forgiven. Many people don't think that. You know, me too. For years, I did not think of the consequences of sin. I was not taught that. Many churches did not teach that. That sins are destructive, even when we are forgiven. Even when we repent and ask God to forgive us, still the sins are, for, uh, are, are destructive. For instance, for instance, if someone yells at another person, and then he asks God to forgive him, and he asks that person to forgive him, still the person will have a bad impression of him, even if he forgives him. He might not forgive him. Even if he forgives him, he will still have some negative feeling, and other people will have negative feeling. And the more he sins, the more negative feeling people will have about him, that people will say, this person has a lot of anger, he hurts other people. So even though he's forgiven, he will reap destruction in his life. And people don't like him. And his life will not go higher and higher. And that's why some people will say, how come I have all kinds of problems in my life? How come problems follow me? The reason is because they, have, they continue to sin, they continue to hurt other people, they don't help people, they don't bless people, they are not helpful, they are not loving, and then they just have anger and frustration and depression and then it brings all kinds of destruction. So why people continue to sin? Because they don't realize sins are destructive and they have not built up the habit of uh, living a holy life. And reminder and warning, if a person continues to sin, he can lose salvation and cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now that is the most serious consequence. And the less serious consequence is that he has problem with the, in the relationship with people, he will have, he will lose his joy. He will have no strength. He would suffer in his family, in his job, in the church, 
in personal relationship in every area, he will suffer. So these are some warning. I will say, okay, how how to overcome sins? Believe that sins are destructive even when forgiven, and we can lose God's blessing in our life. So first, believe that sins are destructive. This is very important. So I hope each one of you here remember this: that sins are destructive. If we continue sin, it will destroy our life. So we remember that. Then we pay attention not to yell at people, not to hurt people, not to despise people, not to have depression, not to take advantage of people, that we understand all these are destructive and lust is destructive. Fornication is destructive. And then have strength from a close relationship with God. Pray for forgiveness and strength because we need the strength to overcome sins. So we have a, need to have a close relationship with Him when we pray to God and love God and worship Him and enjoy Him, then God will bless us. God will be with us and God will bless us. So have, first have a close relationship with Him and then see when there are sinful thoughts, immediately believe that they are destructive. Tell ourselves why it's better to obey God and then choose to stop sins and when they are in our mind. Okay, so th the key is whenever there are sinful thoughts, immediately we realize it's destructive and we pray to God for forgiveness and strength and then we choose to obey now how to choose to obey for instance when a person has lust we say the lust will destroy me lust actually would destroy marriage and destroy future marriage or present marriage and lust will stop you know uh, having a good future in marriage you know, some people, they have lust all the time and they will not, God will not prepare, a, prepare for them a wonderful spouse because it's controlled by lust and God is not pleased with them. God cannot, you know, if this person has a very low spiritual life, God will not prepare someone who is wonderful, a very good Christian, is loving and kind and good in every way to pair with this person because this person, his life is so problematic. He will destroy the other person's life. So God will not prepare a wonderful person for his spouse uh, because of his problem in his life. And even if he marries someone wonderful, he will destroy the person and destroy the marriage. So we understand this is destructive. So we say, Lord, forgive me. I want to choose to not to have lust. Okay, when some people see a beautiful woman, then they have lust. And, and we understand this is destructive. Immediately we say, if I don't want destruction, I want to stop the sin. Immediately I say, I cannot escape God's eyes. God can see me right now. God can see my sin. So I want to stop the sin right now. I want to repent and I want to obey God and God will be happy with me. So we can always encourage ourselves when we obey God. When I stop this lust and I turn away and not to look at this beautiful or sexy woman, God is very happy with me and God will bless me. So that is how I overcome my sins in seconds. Immediately I realize it's destructive. Immediately I turn my head away. Immediately I turn away the sinful thought. If I sometimes have negative thoughts, I tell myself, negative thoughts will be destructive and if I have negative thoughts, it will destroy my ministry and my spiritual life. So I choose to think about the good things of God. Even when someone has done something wrong. Now, uh, some of the pastors have not been faithful. Some of them has, you know, like for instance, um, they use the equipment for something else. I heard that some of them use it uh, uh, to bring people to church to watch football and they don't use it for watching my training and some people even take the money now what happens to them they god is not pleased with them but for me i understand the problem i will handle the problem but i will not let their behavior their sins to drag me down i will not go into depression or unhappiness 
because of the sins. If they have sins, it's their problem. I pray for them that they will repent, but I would not choose to be sad or angry. And I will not let anger or sadness enter my life. I would say, okay, that is his problem. I want to handle that. I want to help the person. I want to help uh, the bishop handle the situation. And I don't want to be affected. I want to move on in joy and in strength. So that is how I live my life. I never want to live in sin. I never want to let any kind of sin affect me. If someone yells at me, I would say, it doesn't matter. He cannot steal from me. Because when I love God, God will prepare for me things eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human mind cannot think of. So when I love God, He cannot steal from me. He cannot hurt me. He can only hurt Himself. And I pray to God to forgive Him and to bless Him, to help Him to repent. But I won't be affected by Him. I won't be affected by Him. So I won't get angry with Him. Even when He yells at me, I won't get angry. Because I choose not to be angry. I choose to live in peace. I will not let anyone take away my peace and joy and strength. So that's how I live my life. Then I follow God in every way as much as I can. And God is pleased with me and give me all these good teachings. So I understand the destructiveness of sin. Any kind of sin that appears in my life, immediately I say no. So these are some points of how to overcome our sins. Okay, Now we go back to this uh, verse and then I present this message uh, in one flow. Okay, John 5.14 Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So this passage tells us that Jesus said to the man healed of 38 years of sickness that he says sin no more or less the worst thing will happen to you uh, or something worse may happen to you. So Jesus tells us that when we sin something worse can happen to us. When we sin destructiveness can come to us because the Bible tells us, Jesus tells us that the thief came to steal, kill and destroy and he came to give us life and life abundantly. So Jesus came to give us abundant life, but the thief, the devil, and sinners came to steal, kill, and destroy. And we don't want to sin. When we sin, we give a foothold to the devil, and he'll come in our life and steal from us. And also we'll give a foothold to wicked people to come into our life and destroy our life. For instance, some people sin, and it, uh, for instance, a pastor sin. And it causes other people to lose faith in him. And then he will let you know, uh, Satan and the people to destroy the ministry. So that is something bad. So we don't want that to happen. So we understand this passage. An example. Why many people still live in sin? Because many people they think that sins are not serious. They think that if they ask God to forgive them, then God will forgive them. And then... All the problems will be taken care of. That's not true. Jesus has told us that worst thing will happen to you. As in the Bible, that David, when he sinned, when he committed adultery and murder, that the sword would not leave his home. That is, would not leave his family. And then he has all kinds of problems in his life. So God will still punish us. God will still punish us when we uh, repent, when after we sin, but and God will punish us, and there will be destructiveness in our that will come into our life. Okay. So um, now God's grace, God's grace is that He is a holy God. He hates sin, and He He is the God who paved the way. Of self, for salvation that so that all people can be saved you know that they have the opportunity to, to be saved but many people don't take the opportunity but God is a wonderful God he is a loving God and he's a holy God and God's holiness is beautiful because heaven is beautiful because there's no sin there and his grace for us is that he prepares salvation for us by sending Jesus to us and he accepts us even before we believe in Jesus. That's why he sent Jesus. 
if he doesn't accept us, if he doesn't love us, he doesn't give us a chance, he will not send Jesus. He sent Jesus before any of us repented. He sent Jesus before people turned to him. So he sent Jesus to prepare salvation before people do anything, before people did anything. We, so we don't deserve his salvation, but God is a wonderful God. He give us salvation. He give us prepare salvation for us. And then after we prepare salvation, he sent the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to speak to us, to guide us to repentance and draw us to follow him and obey him. And the Holy Spirit teaches us not to sin. And the Bible warns us not to sin, lest there will be destructiveness. And then uh, the, uh, God also uses other people, pre the pastors and other Christians, to encourage us not to sin. And God accepts us whenever we repent. Whenever we repent, God is very happy with us, and He'll give us a second chance. So we want to appreciate God. And, but we understand that every time we sin, even when we repent, there will still be destructiveness. There will be consequences of sin, so we need to be aware of that. So now we understand God is full of grace. God, is, God wants to bless us. Okay, why do many Christians still sin? Because they think that sin doesn't matter, because they, they are attracted by sin, because they don't have a good support system from God and from people, because they don't build up a good support system with God that they don't have a close relationship with God and then God cannot bless them and cannot give them strength because they don't pray much and they don't have a good relationship with other Christians so they don't have much uh, strength from God uh, from other people and they have not grown in Jesus so they are weak and they continue to think you know to think uh, of sins and rejoice and enjoy sin and that's why they they continue to suffer because they enjoy sins and they pave the way to sins. They do things that prepare themselves to sin. Uh, they find excuses for them to sin, okay? And then the destructiveness, the warning. The warning is that all sins are destructive. Even when we are forgiven, still they are destructive. So how can we overcome sins? First, how? We want to be specific. First, we realize that sins are destructive. We realize that sin will bring, uh, will give the devil a foothold and he will come to steal, kill, and destroy. And it can destroy our life, destroy our ministry, destroy our family, destroy our church. So we understand the destructiveness of sin. And then we have a close relationship with God so that we have strength. And then we want to pray much so that we can strength. And when we have a close relationship with God, God will continue to speak to us. When He continues to speak to us, then we have more strength. And then when we, the key to overcoming sin is whenever we have sinful thoughts, we stop it right there. How do we stop it? Whenever we have, uh, for instance, anger, we're angry with someone, then we say, if I get angry, it can destroy relationship. And God and, and, and anger does not accomplish God's holiness. So if I get angry, it's not going to benefit anyone. If I get angry with someone, it's not going to help the person to change and grow. So I realize that anger is, you know, it doesn't achieve anything good. So we want to, now except for uh holy anger the god has this holy anger but for people it's hard to have holy anger because we always mix it with our negative emotions that are negative thoughts so it's hard for people to have the the totally holy anger as god has so whenever we have anger we realize this is destructive and is we pray to God for strength and forgiveness and God please forgive me and then we choose we find reasons to help ourselves okay the, some of the reasons are if I get angry with him it's going to uh, discourage him more it's not going to change him and if I get angry it, it uh, affects my relationship with God and with other people and and I have a bad example for other people and I can hurt other people 
and God is not pleased with me, and He can take away my blessings. So then I choose, so I give myself reasons from the Bible why I should not be angry. Whenever we have any kind of sin, we give ourselves reasons why we should not be angry. And then, uh, how? Immediately, I choose to obey. I choose to love God. I choose to obey God. I choose to put down the anger. I choose to say, okay, it doesn't matter. Now, if we cannot control the anger right away, now, it's not suppressing the anger, but we say, it's not wise to be angry. So I tell myself, I don't have to be angry. So that is managing my anger, to manage my anger. So some people might not be able to manage the anger instantly. So they, what they can do is to say, okay, excuse me. Then he walk away uh, outside and then he praise God and worship God and have strength and come back to the person again. And he can tell the person, I'll come back in a moment. So that's how we can handle our anger. We find a place that we can calm ourselves down and praise God and take a deep breath. That's a way to relax also. So these are ways that we can help ourselves to calm down. And then we say, I choose to care about the person and talk to the person gently. And this can help him to change uh, better than being angry with him. So then we choose to, I choose to, I tell myself, it's better to be gentle with him. And then God is happy with me. Now, this actually is in my five, uh, five steps of victory. First, awareness. I'm aware of my sins. Second, sins are destructive. Third, what does the Bible tell me, tell me to do? Fourth, pray for forgiveness and strength. Fifth, that I choose to obey. And in the process of choosing to obey, I can give me reasons from the Bible why I should obey God and why obeying God is better and why not obeying God is bad. Okay? So, now if I give an, an example, how to overcome, now I've give, given an example of how to overcome lust that will choose to turn away from the sexy woman and think about God instead of the sexy woman and uh, think about uh, anger and depression. Okay, some people are depressed easily. They are unhappy easily. Then we are aware that we are unhappy. And I know that is destructive because it will destroy my joy. And, and some people, when they continue to think about negative things, they continue to be depressed and unhappy. And what does the Bible tell us? Rejoice in the Lord. The relationship with God will bring us joy. And fourth, pray for forgiveness and strength. Okay, God, please forgive me. Forgive, forgive me so that I uh, have strength to, uh, to be joyful again, to be peaceful again. And then five, choose to, be, uh, to put down the depression. Now, how can we put down the depression? We'll say to ourselves, if I'm depressed, if I'm sad, if I'm unhappy, it's going to be destructive. So I put down this. I choose to put down the, uh, the depression, the unhappiness, and I choose to praise God and think about all the good things of God. So we have to use our wisdom to think of ways to help us to be joyful. So think of all the good things that God has done for us, that He has blessed us, He has given us the Holy Spirit, that He has given us joy, He has given us strength, he has given us the opportunity to serve God. He has given us uh, all kinds of opportunities and spiritual gifts and uh, support from other people. And then we say, God is so good. I want to rejoice in that. I want to rejoice in the people who are helping me. I want to rejoice in because of God's help, because of the Holy Spirit. I want to rejoice because God always accepts me. So we tell ourselves many reasons. So that's one point. Tell ourselves many reasons why I should obey God. So here, I tell myself many reasons why I should rejoice in the Lord and think about the good things of God and not to be depressed and unhappy. And that's a practical way to overcome sin. So I hope that uh, in your messages that you will tell people practical ways how to overcome sins. That's very important because then people will learn to do it. So, and we demonstrate by examples, just like now I talk about how to overcome sins of um, lust, 
of anger, of depression. Uh, I'll give you an example of laziness. Okay, Some people are lazy. They don't want to serve God. They don't want to read the Bible. They want to, don't want to pray. So we become aware that we are lazy. But some people, they are aware they're lazy. They just continue to be lazy. But if someone wakes up, so we want to wake you up, and you want to wake up your members. If you're lazy, we know that it's destructive. It will destroy our life. And then third point, what does the Bible tell us to do? That we should be diligent and bear fruit. And four, we pray to God for forgiveness and strength. Choose to be diligent. We say our lives can go higher and higher if we are diligent. If we concentrate in serving God and loving God and loving other people, then God will bless our life. But if I'm lazy, I just sit there and do nothing and just watch TV or just uh, watch movies, then I'm destroying my life and I, my life will not go anywhere and I will not go higher. Or some people, they're lazy to train themselves to grow in the Lord or lazy to write assignments, to, do, uh, to write uh, messages, how to write better messages. They don't uh, put work into it. They don't, put, they don't uh, be diligent. They don't get diligent in uh, uh, preparing themselves to serve God. And then what happens is they, they lose the blessings of God. So we tell ourselves, if, we, if I'm diligent in God, if I obey God and serve God all the time, then God is very happy with me and He'll bless me. Of course, we, want to, uh, we don't uh, serve God 24 hours a day. We want to glorify God 24 hours a day. We want to also have a close relationship with God, we enjoy God, we have strength from God before we go to serve God, okay? We don't just work. We first have strength from God and then we go and serve God and glorify God and tell people about how God is, how good God is and then we overcome the laziness and we choose to be diligent, okay? So I hope that you can understand my message and understand this and put into use and uh, and follow the theme in every point of the message. It should be related to the theme, and each theme should be a narrow theme. Do not just have a theme of, oh, uh, the God's, God's grace motivates me. That's a very general theme. Uh, or God, you know, uh, we should be good Christians. This is a general theme. We should have narrow themes. For instance, we should be diligent in serving God. We should seek ways to serve God. We should be joyful. We should love one another. We should forgive other people. We should build up the church. So these are specific messages, okay? So if you have questions, please send it in the group and send your photos of the group in the photo group, okay? God bless you. God be with you. If you have questions, send to me and, and I hope that this will help you in your spiritual life and in your ministry, okay?